Hello dear, you are welcome to Nursing Tutorials with Joel. In today's video, we will be looking at a topic very very interesting which is called antihypertensives. Antihypertensives are drugs used in the treatment of hypertension. Hypertension, as we know, is defined as a persistent or sustained increase in blood pressure. There are many causes of um, hypertension, but physiologically, one of the causes of hypertension could be as a result of vasoconstriction, where the blood vessels, the arteries, veins, becomes narrowed, becomes constricted as a result of certain factors. It could also be as a result of increase in heart beat, heart rate, or increased cardiac output. Also, it could be as a result of influx of calcium uh, ions into the heart, eventually leading to increased cardiac contractility. So, based on all these causes, most of the classes of hypertensive antihypertensives are created. Today we are going to be looking at eight different and distinct classification of antihypertensives. First of all, I would like to just show us an acronym for each and every of the um, antihypertensives. We go with this A3, B, C2, then D, V. We all know our normal alphabetical order A, B, C, D then we have our V. If you can just memorize this, that's all for antihypertensives. Now, we're going to take them gradually. First of all, we have A. Here we have alpha blockers. Alpha blockers, or sometimes called alpha adrenergic blockers, are drugs that reduce the blood pressure by blocking stimulation of the alpha adrenergic uh, system or release. Now, uh, these drugs majorly act on the arteries. Why? Because alpha um, adrenergic receptors are located majorly at the arteries and this block, these um, drugs act on them. So therefore, when these drugs are taken in, they increase the lumen of uh, arteries, they increase the blood vessel, therefore leading to vasodilation. So the blood vessels relaxes and the blood pressure subsides. Examples of these drugs include doxacin, which is also called cadura. We also have prazosin, also called minipress. We also have terazosin, which is also called hytrin. All right. Now, the second one is angiotensin 2 receptor blockers. Now, angiotensin is a chemical or a substance that is released into the bloodstream and it goes to act on especially the, the, the kidney where it causes vasoconstriction generalized vasoconstrictions, meaning that the blood vessels become narrowed and with that the pressure in the blood vessels increase, thereby leading to hypertension. So we can um, generally say that angiotensin causes or leads, or leads to a narrowing of the arteries. Angiotensin leads to narrowing of the arteries. So angiotensin 2 receptor blockers these are drugs that go to block the receptors that receive angiotensin 2 and with that if they can block it they bind to those sites and angiotensin 2 comes and does not see any receptors to bind to thereby there will be a fall in blood pressure example of such drugs include losartan losartan we, the losartan is also called uh, Cosa. Then we have Valsartan, which is also called Dauvan. Then we also have Candesartan, 
if you look at it the acronym or the, the suffix is is just flowing with zatan 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 so anywhere you see zatan you know that it is an angiotensin 2 receptor blocker the next one we'll be looking at is angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors angiotensin converting enzyme or we we'll call it ACE for short is um, is an enzyme that when released stimulates the production of angiotensin now we're not talking of angiotensin directly we're talking of angiotensin converting enzyme so this enzyme works in the body to you know cause the production the increase of angiotensin and we've already discussed previously that angiotensin increases blood pressure so if a drug that inhibits or stops angiotensin converting enzyme production if a drug can do that which means there will be low production of angiotensin and these drugs they, they decrease the release of angiotensin examples of this drug include captopril captopril we also have enalapril malate which is also known as vasotec then we have lysinopril also known as zestril if you discover that they are suffix the word the little uh, part they end with is pril real r r i l so when look when you when you discover a drug like that r i l you discover that there's every possibility it is a an angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor furthermore we're going to look at beta blockers now beta blockers they are drugs that stop or prevent or reduce um, the stimulation of the beta adrenergic um, um, system the beta adrenergic stimulation in the body now when the beta adrenergic stimulation occurs you discover that the heart increases in heart rate also increases in contractility therefore this drug helps to reduce the heart rate they also help to reduce the force with which the heart beats and with that there is a resultant decrease in high blood pressure so examples of these drugs include propanolol which is also known as indera we have acetabulol which is also known as sectra and we have atenolol which is also known as tenomin and we have pindolol the suffix for these drugs are lol lol l o l so meaning that how you can know better blockers is that when you see the l o l suffix you know that this is a better blocker all right now we'll be looking at the centrally acting antihypertensives now these are antihypertensives that act on the central nervous system that's why they are called centrally acting antihypertensives they work directly by decreasing adrenergic outflow coming from the central nervous system most specifically uh, specifically at the brain so um, these drugs go directly to the central nervous system the brain and block adrenergic outflow this adrenergic outflow goes directly to the heart to stimulate the heart so when someone takes these drugs the person uh, the drugs go ahead directly to the central nervous system and works there and decreases blood pressure so example of these drugs includes methyldopa or also known as aldomates then we have recepin also known as harmonil the next drug is a class of antihypertensives is a calcium channel blockers calcium is a chemical that when excess in the blood when found in excess in the blood increases heart rate it increases the strength of heartbeats and excess of it could lead to high blood pressure so uh, one of the treatment regimens for reducing blood pressure is 
administration of calcium channel blockers. Now, so these these drugs act by reducing the pump of calcium into the uh, heart. So, example of these drugs include nifedipine. Nifedipine is also known as Adalat. We also have amlodipine, also known as Novax. We also have isradipine, felodipine, also known as Plendil. If you discover that all of them ends with the pin, the pin, pin, that's the suffix for knowing calcium channel blockers. So therefore, you don't need to stress yourself. Whenever you see any drugs ending with pins, you know that this is calcium. All right. Next is diuretics. This is a very, very interesting class of antihypertensives. Now, first thing we must understand is that sodium has a strong affinity for water. The chemical sodium, when excess in the body, leads to excessive water retention. And when there is excess water in the body, the heart struggles to accumulate those excessive fluid. It struggles to pump out such fluids and um, at the end of the day, there is stress on the heart which leads to high blood pressure. So that is why most times patients with hypertension are usually advised to reduce salt intake because salt is made up of sodium chloride and sodium has a high affinity for water. So um, this diuretics they are further subdivided into um, three or four different classes we have the loop diuretics example which is the fusimide or laxis we also have potassium sparing diuretics which um, example is spironolactone or aldactone then we also have the thiazides. An example is hydrochlorothiazide, also known as Exidrix. We also have another example, indopamine, which is also known as Loxo. We also have the combined forms, where one or two of these classes come together to form an effective diuretic. For example, we have um, Moduretic, which is very, very popular. Moduretic which is a combination of amyloride and hydrochlorothiazide. Secondly, we have aldactazide, which is a combination of spironolactone and hydrochlorothiazide. Next on the list, which is the last, is vasodilators. These are drugs that go directly to the smooth muscles of the blood vessels to relax the blood vessels. They act directly on the smooth muscles. They reduce uh, the stimulation of the smooth muscles. Hence, there is vasodilation. These drugs are fast acting most times. Example of these drugs is um, hydralazine, which is also known as apresoline. Another example is dioxide. So, in summary, the mnemonic here tells us um, a summary of the antihypertensives we have A3, B, C2, D, V. A, the first A stands for the alpha blockers, with the next one stands for angiotensin 2 receptor blockers, the third one stands for angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. The B, it ha we have um, beta blockers. For the C, we have centrally acting antihypertensives. We also have the calcium channel blockers. Then for the D, we have diuretics and finally vasodilators. Please, it is worthy of note to mention that antihypertensives are not the only treatment for um, hypertension. Very, very important is lifestyle modification, where patients are advised to reduce salt to exercise, to stop smoking, to stop alcoholism, and various other lifestyle modification. I believe you've learned a lot from this tutorial. Uh, we'll be looking at 
other interesting topics in subsequent videos so if you've not subscribed please do well to subscribe thank you and stay safe